nice to be outside in a day like today. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. What we're going to focus on today are the sounds we can hear. So I can hear a car passing by. I can hear some dogs in the distance. I can hear some birds. And I think I can almost even hear the rustling of the wind through the leaves. Yeah. So what I want you to do for me is try and focus on the sound you can hear the furthest away. The quietest, smallest sound you can hear furthest away. It might be a tap dripping in the next room. It might be some sheep in the distance. It might be a neighbour down the road talking. Focus on that sound for a second. Okay, now I want you to think about what's happening with that sound. That little sound far away is somehow travelling all through the air, the whole way to your ear. So try to visualise that sound. If you could see it, what would it actually look like? That sound coming through the air. Well today what we're going to do is, we're also going to think about all the other sounds. Yeah, I want you to focus on all those other sounds you can hear, and now hear them all at the same time. So imagine all of them all together moving through the air, what that would look like and how complicated that must be. So today we're going to look at sound, what it really is, get a good understanding of it. We're also going to look at musical instruments and think about what music actually is. So let's go have a look at all that now. Now you probably remember from our earlier episodes that we said that sound is some type of vibration. So that means those sounds I asked you to focus on really far away. They're causing some tiny vibration in the air and that's able to travel the whole way across to your ear. And that room full of loads of different noises that you could imagine, they're travelling all the way across your ear. So if we want to visualise that, I'm going to give us an, an, an interesting and a good tool in order to do that. I'm going to ask you to imagine a tiny little ant sitting on a little leaf that's floating on the top of a swimming pool. Yeah, so imagine we're this little ant just floating on this leaf on top of the swimming pool. Now imagine that the pool is perfectly flat, yeah, it's not moving at all. So the leaf is floating there with the ant on it. Now imagine a, some little kid jumps in at the end of the pool and it causes a splash. And that's going to cause the leaf and the ant to go up and down, yeah, as the water goes up and down and up and down. And if he's a clever little ant, he should be able to figure out, hmm, that must have been a small little child who jumped in there, or he mustn't have jumped from a high height, or something like that, based on how high the waves are. Now it'll eventually calm down and settle again. And let's say now that two kids jump in at slightly different times. So we get a splash, splash. And now suddenly the wave that comes down, it's a little bit more complicated. It's not quite as easy to figure out. So our aunt is like, hmm, he might be able to figure out, well, that must be two people that jumped in, but it's getting a bit more complicated. Now imagine a whole busload of kids arrive and they all jump in and dive in and swim over and back. Imagine what the surface of the water would be like. It's jiggling all over the place. It's going up and down and it's going high and low and there's small little waves and big waves all combining to make a kind of a mess. So this poor little ant is completely confused. He can't figure out. He's like, well, I don't know how many people are jumping in. I don't know how big they are, how small they are. I don't know what's going on. So this is kind of like what the air is like when we're listening to something. Yeah? All those vibrations travelling through the air, they're all very complicated. And our ears have to be able to figure out what all the different sounds are in all of this mess. So the next time you're in a loud place, yeah, or even in a place that's not so loud, just try and imagine that. Imagine all of these vibrations being like the surface of this pool. And think about how cool it is that your ears and your brain helping them are able to figure all that out and let you hear the sounds. Now let's go learn a thing or two about music. Now, to figure out how music works, we're going to use a guitar as an example. Well, how can just touching strings make such lovely noise? And why does one string sound different to another string? Well, to really figure this out and to really visualise it, we're going to have to get super close and we're going to have to slow time down. Okay? So let's take a really close look and see what happens when I pluck this string. So, we can see it vibrates over and back and over and back. It's pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling the air. So, 
as it pushes and pulls that air, those pushes and pulls move right through the air the whole way to your ear. And it detects it. Now, what about this other string here with a higher pitch? Well, if we hit this string, what we'll notice is that it pushes and pulls and pushes and pulls, but at a far higher speed, what we call frequency. So we have the high frequency, and we have low frequency. Now, what about if I change the length of a string? Yeah, say that high pitch string. At the full length of the string, it has this particular frequency or rate of vibration. If I make it shorter, uh -huh, we can see it vibrates a lot faster. Okay, when it's shorter, it vibrates a lot faster. I'm still putting the same amount of energy into it by plucking it with my finger, but just less string to move, so it's going to vibrate faster. So musicians just use all these different lengths and tensions of strings to make music. <laughs> Okay, so we looked at individual frequencies, or notes as they're called, but I want to talk about something else in music called a chord. A chord is when we play multiple notes all at the same time. And they all combine together. Imagine each one is a different source of a different frequency. Now if you've ever tried to learn a musical instrument, you'll know that, especially at the start, it's hard to make everything sound good. It can sound a bit kind of wrong. Yeah? But why would certain combinations sound wrong and certain combinations sound right? What makes a sound sound good to our ears? Well, we'll look at a few combinations here and we'll try and visualise them. Yeah? Thinking again of our little ant yeah? floating on our water. We're going to use that in, uh, in our imagination to visualise it. So let's imagine this note and this note together. sound very good, don't they? The two of them together sounds very nice. Now what you'll notice is if you look at those two frequencies together, they make a nice pattern, yeah? It's a little bit complicated but overall it's quite a nice pattern. If we look at these two notes together, two other notes that always sound good, those two together, they also make not so complicated a pattern. Okay, so we can imagine for our little ant floating underwater, he can try and kind of figure this out. Now, if we imagine two notes that typically don't work together, yeah, let's try this one and this one. Yeah, play them together. Okay, we can hear that's a bit more nasty. It doesn't sound so pleasing. And if we look at the pattern, we can see it's more complex. Yeah, so we can see that a more complex pattern. So we can imagine if we're our ant floating there, it's going to be more difficult to figure out what is going on. Now, there's a whole area of research that goes into the mathematics behind why certain notes, combinations of notes, sound bad and certain sound good, but you can really get an idea of it when you think about it like this. And what's even more complex is the fact that some chords, yeah, sound happy, and some sound sad. So how can combinations of different frequencies be happy or sad? So that's pretty crazy as well. And there's even more complicated chords that have different feelings. What's that one? Is that happy? It's a type of happy, but what exactly is it? So you can see that there's an awful lot of science and maths underneath all this music that we might have thought about before. So I hope next time when you listen to a piece of music, you'll be able to try and appreciate that. And you'll think about that little ant jumping up and down and does he think it's complicated to figure out or easy to figure out. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one and you learned a few new things about sound and music and how different sounds can combine together to make us feel happy or sad or even confused. So um, if you do have an instrument that you, that you play, I hope that you can try and think a little bit more about how it makes those sounds. And if you don't, maybe one day you can try and pick up an instrument. It's a lot of fun and it's good for the old brain to keep it going. So take care, guys, and hopefully we'll see you again soon for another video. Bye-bye.